Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and this is the third video from the West Grinstead ploughing match. But it's not ploughing I'm looking at today. We've had this terrific view. If you haven't seen some of the other videos, then do check them out. They're absolutely amazing. We've looked at traction engines and some of the vintage tractors and things. But something that's been going on for generation after generation, going back to the dawn of time, I imagine, is hedge laying. And I want to find out a little bit more about this old art. And here is a gentleman doing a bit of hedge laying, say a bit. They're, uh, they're actually doing the competition to hedge lay, which is a twofold thing, I understand, in as much as not only are they laying the hedges now and judged on their ability to do that, but also a year later to see how well the hedge has grown. And I can see we've got some slows here, which I think is blackthorn, isn't it? And uh, is it hazel that you're laying? Uh, I've got field maple. Field maple. Hazel, blackthorn, hawthorn, and spindle. Oh, right. Okay. Within this Within cant. this. It's called a cant. A cant. It's the, and that's the, what, the length of the hedge? The length hedge? of the piece you lay. Right. I won't stop you because you're, okay. uh, you're under competition. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Many. you've got to do it but you're um sorry i'll ask your name that would be less I'm rude of me david drosher david nice and, to meet you and generally you have 10 yards it's a cant and it's six hours work and you're given five hours to do it oh right <laughs> but on this occasion because the hedge is quite small the cants have been reduced, reduced and we've only got four hours oh right oh, okay so hence we're under you've got to yes you've got to get a crack on so you're, these long pieces of uh, timber that you're using there... They're called binders. Binders. And, and what, what is that? They're hazel. Hazel. And they hold the stakes in place until the hedge has grown into the new position. Right. Uh, after a couple of years, three, four years, they'll rot away. But by then, the hedge will have taken up its new position and it'll last a hundred years. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. And you're basically you're just weaving those in between the stakes, yes. like, yeah, hurdle like hurdle making, yes. yeah. This is uh, so on your farms, Richard. Do you have people who've laid hedges in oh, the yes. past? Is I'm, it I'm, along with the coppicing? I'm trying to do a certain amount of hedge laying every year. Yes. So um, to keep the well, to as keep I the said tradition about the coppicing, going. If you don't cut it when it gets to a certain age, it dies. Cut it and lay it, and hopefully you'll have a brand new hedge after that's self perpetuated Yes. But if you don't cut it every now and then, it gets too big and straggly and there's nothing left in it. Interestingly enough, he was talking about a cant. That's a very old Sussex name for a, a, an area of work. You do your ploughing in cants. Oh, do you? Yeah, and you, you do your, whatever you're doing, you mark a cant out. It can be 10 yards, 20 yards, whatever. So it's, it's, it's not a specific measure. It's not a specific measure. It's just no, your it's, area It's work. just a term of an area. Right. Oh, so I don't know if they use it anywhere else in, other than Sussex. Ah. <laughs> it's great to get some of those old Sussex names. This gentleman here is... Massive drop in the ground. Yeah, yeah. He's measuring the height of his binders. Oh, right. So you, once you've got your binders in, I notice you were bashing them down to keep them all together. Yeah, it's also that and also to set the height. You can't drive your stakes in until the binders are at the right height. Oh, right. And the, the, the South of England style, generally the, the height of the top of the binding is four feet from the ground. But right. it's a bit tricky because, you know, very rarely do you get the ground. The ground is exactly. not level, is it? No. So you have to keep standing back every so often to make sure it's nice and level. So you've got to keep that, even though your ground might dip down, the your yeah. horizontal's got to be That's straight. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, How many of you he are here today doing this? this I think there's 13 of us. Gosh. Um, you know, and it can be, you can get quite a lot more than that. Um, at the end of October we've got the national competition coming up um, and there's hundreds of cutters and there's 10 different styles being demonstrated so right. people come from all around the country. And is, um, there, is there a Sussex style or when you say different styles? Um, it's, it comes under the South of England style. Right, so uh, we, we do it differently to, to the northerners. You do get subtle variations though. Um, oh. There's even an Isle of Wight style oh, okay. which is a cross, kind of a cross between South of England and Dorset. And these are stars have just grown up from the regions from generation after generation basically pretty much yeah, yeah. I and mean, it was all due to all originally it was due to farming methods and, and uh, crop rotations and things right. like that the south of england style 
uh, on a decent hedge will be will be identical from both sides so it will be brushed on either side of the hedge oh, so in, it, in, in section it looks like a, a box right like that and the idea was because we had a lot of sheep farming down here then you'd have sheep in both fields and that you double brush would keep the sheep off the regrowth yes and you go up to the midlands there's a lot more mixed farming so you get a, a different style again where one side of the hedge looks completely bare and that's known as the face side or the plough side and that's the size you would grow in your cereal crops. So you could plough right up to it. Well, pretty much. As close as, yeah. And then on the other side, it would be really heavily brushed. And that's where you put the cattle. And again, that brush would keep the yeah, cattle off the or your sheep. It would keep them, the animals off, off the regrowth. How long have you uh, been today? How far have you got on your time scale? When do you have to finish? Uh, we finish at quarter to one. I think it's now something like quarter past 12. So right. half past 12, something like that. So, so we've got just over an hour to go. Yeah. <laughs> we hey, should be all right. should be fine. Cool. Well, it's, it's looking very impressive. I don't want to hold you up because no, limited fine. time, but uh, it's a great sight to see all these guys working yeah. on a tradition that's been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. And, and it's really um, coming back into fashion, if you like. Uh, there's a lot of interest being shown, you know, in, in hedge lane now. Um, a lot of people wanting it in their gardens, even if they've only got a short run of hedge. They, oh, right. they, they like the way it looks. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, there's a lot of interest in youngsters as well. And there's a lot of incentives for youngsters to come in and, and learn oh, how to do it. That's really good, isn't it? Which is what we need. Yeah, really. uh, yeah absolutely. So not, not a dying art. Not at all. No. Not at all. Oh, well, that's very good news. So there we go. <laughs> I'll let you crack on. Thank you. That's really interesting, Richard. Not, not, not a dying art at all. No. Not a youngsters getting involved. Good. And people wanting to have that in their garden. Well, definitely. Is... It's a feature. Yeah. Well, well, it is expensive. There's no doubt about that. But the thing is, once it's done, it regrows itself. Right. With a little bit of hedge trimming, it'll, you know, it'll last for another 50 years or something. Because wasn't there, there was a time, what, 10, 15 years ago or 20 years ago when the hedges were all got rid of and the idea was to get rid of bigger, bigger fields all the time? Well, of course, that goes back to the onset of machinery. Right. Bigger and bigger machinery. Um, needed more space. You need more space. I mean, you wouldn't work work one of those big combines in a four acre field no so you'd only go around it about twice and you have to come out <laughs> yes again. that's true and of course what people don't realize is years ago that during the war and after the war rabbits were such a plague it was difficult to grow crops at all oh right um, and they all love the dry banks where your hedges are ah yes so the way to get to control your hedge and control your rabbits is to take the thing out altogether and then the rabbits have got no hidey holes. Yes. Only around the outside of the field. The bigger the field, the less rabbits you've got. Ah. Uh, I mean, I've yeah. done a lot of that myself to get rid of the banks where the rabbits live. I mean, I've, we used to have a farm uh, near Maplehurst, and if you went up there at night in the autumn after the wheat had come up, it would look as if the field had got up and run. <laughs> uh, it, just as if the soil had taken up so many rabbits up. Really? And they'd clear a field of wheat as big as this one was standing in overnight. Yeah. There'd be nothing left in the morning. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. And that would come pest. back. It'll come back tw twice, but the third time it would have enough and there would be no wheat. Gosh. And the rabbits up there, because they live in the woods, it was impossible to get rid of them. Yeah. But apart from rabbits, I guess the hedges are great for diversity, for creatures, butterflies. Oh, it is now. And, and, yeah. But of course, as the labour uh, situation got different, we had more and more she machines, less men. There wasn't any men to do the hedge trimming in the winter. Because ah. hedge trimming and ditching is a staple job, doing some good and giving your men something to do. Yes. But if you haven't got any men, that's, yes. <laughs> no, so they would just get work. And I guess at the beginning of the war, when people weren't growing, so much and we were relying on um, the, uh, the convoys of uh, food from overseas. I remember reading about um, the hedges had grown to huge proportions oh, where well, they hadn't been looked after. A lot of the farms, the, the hedges, if these are uncut, if you look down that way, you'll see that overgrown blackthorn and they come out into the fields. They grow out into the fields. If, if they're not checked every year, yes. the field gets smaller and smaller and you end up with woodland many many farms were completely derelict before the last war and they suddenly had to have a panic to clear them and get them back into production gosh yeah and now that's been abandoned again now thanks to the eu um yes the fields are beginning to fall down again now it's uh, it's it's funny how we don't learn don't seem to learn anything at no all, no not at all and on that note ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Uh, that's our visit to the hedge lane, which has been really interesting. Good. I've enjoyed that as Excellent. well. Uh, so do join me again uh, 
going to go and have another look around the, the rest of the show. But for now, thanks for watching and catch up with you later. Thank you, Richard. Pleasure. Bye for now. <laughs>